Welcome to the Mindful Healers podcast, to our episode about being kind to yourself is better than being nice to yourself. A reminder that none of our episodes should be considered medical advice. The intention of today's episode is to inspire you to be kind to yourself and not necessarily nice to yourself as a way of living in greater authentic alignment with your values. We hope that during this episode, you'll discover the perhaps personal definitions of niceness and kindness and how applying each of these attributes might be already exemplified in your life currently and beyond. Our takeaways for you are that we hope you will realize it's possible to be nice to yourself and others, but that niceness might not be kind. It's also possible to be kind and nice Also, it's possible to be not nice, but kind. We hope that you will take away that ultimately it's your choice, which serves you better in the moment. And perhaps that coming from an intention of kindness or niceness will really depend on the situation. Ultimately though, we invite you to adopt an intention for kindness, especially with yourself. And Dr. Ivana Tor, whom many of you know from the executive board of the Mindful Healthcare Collective, who has offered many, many offerings of her respite coaching sessions, and Jesse, who happened to be in town in San Diego, where Ivana and I live, had brunch the other day, after literally paddling up to the beach adjacent to the restaurant. And as always, we go deep in our conversations and the ideas of being nice to oneself and kind to oneself came up. And so that was our episode inspiration. And I just wanted to reflect a bit on it because I think it came up from what I said about, is it possible to be too kind to yourself? And what was fun is that we all disagreed on that concept. And so that's where the distinction between being kind and being nice came about. And so today, and I love these little winks from the universe that give me a clue in reaffirming that I'm living in alignment. I came across this quote by Alison Yesterfelt that Jesse and I will share with you together right now. So here we go. Niceness stays quiet. Kindness speaks up. Niceness is toxic. Kindness is healing. Niceness lies to keep the peace. Kindness knows the only way to make peace is to tell the truth. Niceness holds back. Kindness moves forward with humility, gentleness, and grace. And this nice versus kind discussion actually came up, Jesse, as you were talking about that morning of the meal when you chose to sleep in and had coffee in bed instead of waking up early and exercising. And I actually find it comes up a lot for me as I've gotten better and better at practicing kindness. And we did a couple of episodes on kindness last year and kindness being the answer. And when we talked with Kristen Neff also, Kindness is a key component of self-compassion. And so I have been working really hard on being kind to myself. And sometimes I've discovered that you can use kindness against yourself and or in ways that don't actually um, ultimately feel good or help you um, improve yourself. And I think that it comes up in many things, whether it's coffee in bed, which you can convince yourself is kind. And some days it is kind, like on a rainy weekend day, having coffee in bed feels just lovely and luxurious and um, delightful and is a gift to yourself. But doing it every day, you can sometimes get too far into the kindness to yourself. And um, what I think is interesting here is it's getting back to the importance of words, which we talk about in this podcast a lot. And so there is this subtle difference between nice and kind. 
And um, I just thought it was really interesting for me. I still sit more in the using the word kind. I find it helpful to think about like, oh, I might be being too kind to myself and therefore it's not actually kind. Um, it's, it can potentially being too kind can cause you harm. And what I think is key about this is knowing yourself and being able to be mindful and step out of yourself and say, is this really kind? Or am I being from this conversation nice? Where nice might just allow yourself to do something that doesn't feel good. And so if you're thinking about words and you think about this poem, right? If, is it healing? So maybe sometimes you have to step out of that word kindness and look at it a little bit differently. Is it healing? Does it keep the peace? Is it graceful? Is it gentle? Um, is it humble? Um, because I think when, when we use the right words in asking a question, and so that's where I think the wording is really important, whether it's kindness or niceness, I think niceness is a word, um, or even choosing a different word sometimes. And so we don't, I, I caution people often about overusing a word. And that's where like finding the exact right word um, is really powerful. And this has just come to me, but so I don't want to be nice. And I think I'm overusing kind. Um, and so from this poem, I might ask like, what would grace do? Or I know in a few of my recent um, yoga classes, I've used the word elegant. Um, and like there's elegant, you can be elegant vulnerability. You can, um, when you do things elegantly, there, um, I think of elegant as kind of classy. It's a little bit graceful, but it's also got another like really grounded authenticity. And so I might say to myself, like, is this elegant? It doesn't always work. Or is this graceful? Or is this um, healing, I think is the other word. And um, sometimes maybe too, you want to be growing. And so thinking about where you are in your life and what you're looking for in that moment or what your intention for that day is. We often talk about intentions and being really specific in your word choice is a really powerful tool here. And so actually, I think my question when I asked, is it possible to be too kind to yourself? It's just opened up all this interesting things, but I think it's, it's, um, being careful with the words that you choose. And so you're right, I'm gonna give you, it's, it's probably not possible to be too kind to yourself, but um, maybe picking the exact word and maybe you don't want kindness all the time. What are your thoughts on that? I think the answer to your question, is it possible to be too kind to yourself is super personal. And it's also like situation dependent, right? And like, I'm not meaning to um, be wishy-washy about my response. But for me, coming from the habit of self-criticism and self-flagellation, for me, I think it's impossible to be too kind to myself because my habitual old self has been that I've been historically unkind. Uh, and maybe that's coming from a place of like too much of a fixed mentality in mm -hmm. that particular belief uh, and that my new belief is that I am learning to always be kinder to myself. I think that um, what comes to mind there is that we're all on our own journey and we're all at a different spot in our journey. And so that you're not at a spot where it, it's not possible for you to be too kind for yourself yet. And maybe at some point it would be, or maybe the answer there is to shift the word and shift the question. And I really like your concept. I don't think making it personal is wishy-washy. I think that often with self-help and personal development and coaching, we get into these ideas of, oh, it's just this, and you can change your thoughts, and that will change how you feel, and that will change. Um, and I do believe in that model. And you have to massage it for your own personal situation and where you are and what you might be experiencing. And we can use any of these tools, even kindness against ourselves, if we're not careful and selective about how we use it, and I shouldn't say careful, mindful would be the word, use it with intention and purpose and attention so that you're not just using these tools. It brings to mind this idea of using coaching against yourself. And so maybe if you want to feel motivated, but, but maybe you want to feel, you don't want to feel motivated all the time. And so it's like, I'll just change my thoughts or I'll change my thoughts to stay in this situation or I'll, um, you know, 
I, I want to do this hard thing, so I'm going to push myself. But when you not don't step back and are mindful, you often don't end up where you want to end up. And so thinking about where you actually want to end up, which is usually a feeling. And so that's where you can use kindness and maybe what you want to feel in the end is healed. Or maybe what you want to feel in the end is motivated, in which case sitting in bed drinking your coffee is probably not the kind act. And so thinking about how you want to feel in the end and working backwards from there, maybe how you generate and decide what's the right action. And then the other piece is like thinking about using kindness as a result for oneself. So if we put, I want to be kinder to myself in the results line. So kindness for self, thinking about the actions and the feelings and the thoughts that would lead one to become kinder for oneself also can work. Yeah. That's beautiful. If you're wanting to grow more kindness and it's not a pushing model. Do you see that? It's a very relaxed, calm, intentional model. And then using kindness in the feeling line to get yourself to show up in a way, but from a kind space. Because kindness actually can be, I think many times we think of it as a soft, relaxed, non-action oriented feeling. But for me, if I come from a place of kindness, I can go much farther, much faster. Um, it's actually a very activated emotion, reminding me of love as an activating emotion. It isn't just sort of a sit and enjoy it, which it can be, but it can be actually very kind to go for a run or to do some cardio or to go do yoga, even when you don't feel like it or go for a walk. So it depends on intention. It all boils down to intention with regards to uh, the kindness piece. And there are these universal truths that we can all as humans agree upon. Perhaps I think one of them, given recent events of gun violence in the United States, is that like, we sure as heck could use a kinder world in general uh, with kinder people. Um, I think that, that that is one universal truth that we can, we can agree upon. Um, so there is a universality, but then also when we bring what that means to us very personally, then there's a lot of room for wiggle and a whole spectrum of things um, and actions and feelings. Uh, and I just wanted to also point out that like this whole discussion that we had uh, during this brunch, um, it was seen as quite deep. So I went to go pay for our meal and the, the bartender who we had ordered from she was like, if you don't mind me asking, like, what, what, what do you all do for a living? <laughs> and um, so I answered, oh, we're all physicians. But those two, meaning Jesse and Yvonne, are also physician coaches, and I'm a mindfulness teacher. And she was like, oh, that's so interesting, because this is not the type of discussion that usually is had <laughs> in this restaurant. Over eggs. Exactly, over eggs. And so I um, I thought that it was just really funny that um, even to outsiders who might have been hearing our conversation in passing, it was quite um, uh, notable and unique and had this depth of uh, philosophical pondering um, that was somewhat playful too. Yeah, I, I mean, it's interesting because I'm still pondering this question and I, I don't actually think there's an answer. Is it possible to be too kind to yourself? But what I love about it is it opens up possibilities and creativity and it gets you thinking in different ways about the definitions of words and how you treat yourself and how you want to treat yourself and what's good for you slash healthy for you slash healing for you. And do you, how do you wanna show up in the world? Do you wanna show up gracefully? Do you wanna show up um, energetically or pushing? And um, so I think sometimes you bring up these topics and like whole worlds open up. Cause I had really, um, I meant it as kind of a simple thing. I was really just trying to figure out how long I should sit in bed and drink my coffee. And when was I overdoing it? And when was it nice? And I, I had this very clear sense that I had started to overdo it. 
and then I should really be getting up and that um, and that came from looking at the result and saying that, oh, I, you know, I wish that I was taking the time to go to the beach in the morning and go for a walk and I should, therefore I was not making the kind choice and I could see it from the end product and also not beating yourself up about that. So, right. It's definitely not kind to beat yourself up for not being, for being too kind to yourself. And so instead staying kind and saying, oh, well, the kind thing to do might be to try the walk tomorrow or bring your coffee to the beach. That would be very kind. Um, and so just kind of thinking through all the options and all the flavors can be super cool. Yeah, super fun. And I think it it's the ultimate answer, I think. Here I go being <laughs> like fixed and trying to be universal yeah, yeah. is that I think it depends. It really depends. It really depends on when you're asking yourself the question, why you're asking yourself this kindness versus nice question. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe the fact is that you are asking the question to begin with, and mm -hmm. that deserves merit in it of itself. Well, and the ability to ask that question is not a question I would have been able to ask myself a few years ago. Right. I wasn't even I was more where you were saying, like, I just wasn't even kind to myself. And so you can ask that question when you're done being mean to yourself. So, you know, that you're no longer mean to yourself and you're actually beyond neutral. Right. So you've you've gone to kindness. And I often say there's that continuum of kindness and then compassion and then love. And whether it's a straight continuum or it's a little bit wavy and bumpy, to be honest. But I think that when you're in that area, that's where you're really trying to figure out, like, how do I want to live my life? What would be a well-lived life? Interestingly, Yvonne and I also had a conversation about, um, in my business, I often say for a life better lived. And then we were talking about, well, should it be for a life well-lived and is better kind to yourself or is saying the word well more kind to yourself? And what is your aspiration? And what I would say is I don't think the exact words matter, although I do think words matter a lot, but whatever the word is gonna matter for you. So if you want better, then that inspires you. If you want a well life, then that inspires you. And there's a little bit of a different flavor. And so different people will be inspired by different language. And the key thing I think is actually stepping out of that dichotomy of like black or white or good or bad, or is this kind, because things are not necessarily hurtful or kind, like it may be neutral sitting in bed and it, some days it may be harmful and some days it may be kind. And so allowing ourselves, that's where I think mindfulness comes in. You're stepping outside and looking from afar and it's really being intentional about how you wanna be living and down to a, the simple question of where you wanna drink your coffee, <laughs> walking in bed, driving. Do you wanna sit at a coffee shop? Do you wanna, how do you wanna start your day? And how do you, um, I often coach from when I say the feeling line, how do you want to feel in your day? And that actually may be the ultimate answer to kindness, right? Is I want to feel, um, for me, maybe inspired, light or present. And it may be a little bit different each day, but choosing that intention and then making actions that are in line with that intention. And so what's coming to mind here is this idea of using words against ourselves. And so we've done a lot of episodes on kindness and a lot of episodes on um, self-compassion. And so just not to use kindness as a blanket term, whatever it means for you, use it when that terminology is helpful for you. Um, I would like to get back to this idea of being nice though, because I don't know that we've really explored nice. And from that poem, nice, um, implies to me a bit of people pleasing. Yeah, the, in, from that quote, nice is like vilified. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it may or may not need to be, but I think that's the distinction that we sometimes use the word kindness as nice or as people pleasing. And so what's coming to mind here is kind is kind to others and kind to yourself. And if you don't include yourself in it, it doesn't work. Just like love, we love others, but sometimes we show up for, we say it's love because we're doing what they want. But if it isn't something that's authentically aligned for us, it's actually not love, it's people pleasing. And we talk about that in coaching a lot. And so that strikes me as true for compassion too. And as 
um, in healthcare, we're trained to just have endless compassion. But if you don't include yourself and compassion for yourself, you run out and then you have compassion fatigue. And so for all of these, the question is kindness, like, is it kind to you and kind to the world and kind to whoever else might be involved in the conversation? I wanted to highlight uh, the dichotomy and the kind of splitting that our brains like to do because our brains love efficiency and shortcuts. And that's why habits ultimately are so hard to break. There are these super highways that have already formed from decades of conditioning, whether it be um, from our childhood, uh, our training, certainly all of this has something to do with how we show up in the world today, in this moment. Uh, and even this whole discussion of niceness versus kindness brought out how easy it was for our brains to go that route, to want to lump and categorize and label and make black or white kind and nice. When really the two, as you said, uh, it's actually not a straight line continuum. The two are often more amalgamous with each other and the conditions of nice and kind and then not nice and kind as being kind of the extremes. Most of the time, our actions regarding kindness and niceness are somewhere in between. I think that's true. And I think that's where we sometimes get fixated on the words. And so as deep as the conversation is, maybe in a sense, it was just sort of superficial. And it's like, these are just words. And really what matters is taking good care of yourself. And that was really the intent of the question is like, how do you figure out when, how to take good care of yourself? And um, that sometimes we use words to get somewhere. It's just a fascinating um, conversation. <laughs> and so, because um, that ultimately is the question. And it's interesting, we're exploring this as we talk, right? Maybe the question is, how, did you, how do you take good care of yourself? And now I'm going to say, what is a well-lived life? And that's something that I really tried to focus on for my own life and to help other people focus on. In your well-lived life, it looks very different from my well-lived life. And a well-lived life is also made up of well-lived days and so and well-lived moments. And so the other thought I have is if you're going to drink the coffee in bed, you really should enjoy it. Allow it, enjoy it, you know, be really mindful and um you know, smell the smells and taste the flavors and enjoy the sheets and enjoy the sounds outside and all of those things, whether it's the sunshine pouring in the window or the fog or the rain, whatever it might be. Um, and then if you decide you want to make a different choice tomorrow, don't self-flagellate, right? Don't be mean to yourself. Just decide that, oh, tomorrow's the day that I'm going to be walking. And the final thought that comes to mind here is if you decide that it's not kind to yourself, reach out for help. And your help might look like a conversation at lunch or brunch, because that actually helped me clarify like, well, what was I struggling with? And in the end, I would say, maybe it's not even a kindness issue, even though I actually really like the question, are you being too kind? Because to me, it immediately evokes like, is this how I want to be showing up intentionally? What is well for me? What are the feelings that I want to have today? And am I being in alignment? And I think that most of us don't ask those questions and we don't take the time to ask those questions. We move through the world on autopilot. And so whatever question is a good question because it gets you to stop and think and it gets you to move through your lives with purpose and intention. And life is not scarce. I always want people to come from abundance, but sometimes you want to use scarcity um, for you rather than against you. And so that would say like, we each have this one precious life enjoy it, treat yourself well, take good care of yourself, what will serve your highest purpose. Um, and again, that's not more is better. It's just your what what will be literally taking good care of yourself. And so on that note, we will close our podcast as usual with some reflection questions for you. What if you set the priority for yourself to always be kind to yourself, even if that meant you weren't necessarily always going to be nice to yourself. In what ways are you already kind, but not nice? 
what about ways where you are already kind and nice? In what ways have you already been nice, but unkind? What about not nice and unkind? Or I'm thinking maybe simplify it all and say, what do you need to do to take good care of yourself? And I think my answer to the question, is it possible to be too kind to yourself, is it depends. And really, um, is that the question that you want to be asking? And what might be the question that you want to ask yourself to treat yourself as well as possible from a place of kindness and or care? And how do you want to show up in the world? And what's going to help you do that in the actually most kind way possible? So at least we agree on that, that the answer to your question, is it possible to be too kind to yourself, is that it depends. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> On that note, one way to be kind and nice for yourself is to join Jesse and me at our first ever Mindful Healers Connect in Nature retreat. As of the time of this recording, we only have three spots left. You're going to experience options for practices of kindness for ourselves and others. We'd love to experience this with you. And CME is available for physician attendees. And I just want to reflect at the end of this podcast, because yesterday I was driving home from this um, physician wellness mastermind think tank, and I drove past the place where we'll stay and the place where we retreat and the water that um, many of you, if you decide to do the optional kayaking or paddle boarding and um, it is kind to yourself to be in that space with that breeze and that air and exploring just a beautiful spot that you haven't been before. And whether it's foggy or sunny, or as yesterday, it was late afternoon, evening, and the fog was coming in. It's just a magical place. And being in nature is kind to yourself and nice to yourself. And so we would love to share it with you. And perhaps we'll have another equally um, deep, fascinating, entertaining conversation about um, how to have a life well lived in honor of um, Dr. Ivana Tor. She she likes well. So we wish you all a life well lived, a week well lived, a day well lived, and every moment this week well lived. Join us for our mindful moment offering after the sound of the singing bowl. Welcome to today's Mindful Moment Offering. Inviting you to close your eyes or lower your gaze a few inches in front of you if it's safe to do so. Inviting some kind, compassionate, respectful touch, perhaps bringing your hands over your heart or gently squeezing your arms, like you're giving yourself a hug. And simply resting in the sensations of the contact between your hands and your body. Noticing the sensations of that interface. And reflecting upon, getting curious, with this question, how can I be kind to myself right now in this moment? And perhaps that's by shifting your body position into one that is more conducive to comfort. Perhaps that's taking a couple of deep breaths to simply settle in this moment. Perhaps it's doing a couple of neck rolls or stretches to lengthen, create a sense of spaciousness within the body. 
Getting curious. Asking yourself the question, how can I be kind to myself right now? And in moments of difficulty, this question can be used not to make the difficulty go away, but to simply approach yourself with kindness and compassion. As a mother bear would do, comforting a sick cub. We can tap into our innate ability to nurture ourselves and each other. So inviting you to use this question, how can I be kind to myself in this moment? Thank you so much for practicing with me today.